Hi, it's Xavier and uh, welcome to my bonsai retreat and you know, knock me down with a feather or an 80 mile an hour wind. We're pretty well in the last, well we are, we're in the last week of September. First month of um, autumn has uh, passed us by and uh, I'm starting to think ahead. What am I going to be doing in October and November, which are our uh, final two months of uh, the autumn? And as I said before, in the last time I did this, it probably helps for you to know what's going on up there because generally you don't get to see it till well past its use by date. But my wife used to say things like that about the same things that would come out of my head. Yeah, enough said, I think. So, you haven't seen these this year, I don't think, but these are my, um, what I call my premium Chinese elms. And uh, they were a, a parting related gift for my wife who insisted that I had two show trees for people that when they walked into the retreat they could go well this is some bonds i hear so i'll tell you what my plans are over the next month for these they need tidying up there's some dead branches and stuff um a little bit of growth coming away from the profile i'm not going to do a major prune i'm going to be leaving that for the early spring when i can actually do proper bud selection what i will do is just cut just generally back just to regain the shape just remove some of these deadens and then clean off the rubbish that's on top. They both were repotted a year ago, so that's not an issue. And like these, I've probably got another uh, 15 or 16 Chinese elms of sort of similar different sizes, which also need to have a light prune. Of course, the rest of the Chinese elms in Chinese Elm Alley, they very rarely get separated and seen properly. I really have to make a point of next year dealing with these as they should be. They're going to move to a different area of the garden anyway. We're also looking at this time of the year with all our deciduous basically that as those leaves are starting to drop the tree is going to be pulling all its energy back down into the roots and it's generally in that, that sort of first week or so, um, week two weeks after that leaf drop when we can do quite a bit of work certainly on the ones that bleed a lot and we'll get to the Japanese maples in a minute but silver birch we know this one, this was the one I got from Ryan Horton of Horton's Bonsai. It's had a good year in here. No doubt there's roots developing. We've had lots of growth, so much so that, as you know, the caterpillars absolutely munched it to pieces. So I won't go particularly wild on it. Um, I'm glad there's growth, it's feeding energy, but I will probably look at just doing a little bit of gentle wiring to establish some sort of pad shape and maybe just a little bit of prune back. So that's gonna happen. And also, this second birch, as you know, um, has been developing since the, uh, the ravages of the summer last year. I'm wired out this branch and the top here. Loads of growth on it. So, you know, I'm happy that the next stage of the rebuild is, uh, is progressing. Um, but again, clean up, get rid of all the uh, suckers. And as the leaves start to fall, I'll probably look to just, I'm looking to wire this down. I think originally I had it upward going. I'm going to go for a more traditional sort of um, silver birch, uh, sort of weeping one where the branches are actually heading downwards. And of course, we're also going to be looking at the Dawn Redwoods. And, and you'll see clearly from here, we have got so much growth, um, so many places to, to prune back to, that I'm really, really happy with how this has worked out on all of them. You know, all of them have got loads and loads of um, bifurcation and branch points. And, and I'll be clipping back to the ones that I want. But that's going to happen as soon as these uh, turn yellow and everything drops, then out come the clippers. And that's going to be happening in the next probably four to six weeks. But for now, I'm just going to enjoy just how much frond, green fronds we've got and how many possibilities for creating new structure, uh, new secondary, and in some cases, tertiary development so they will be looked at as well now, this is also going to be the time where i'm going to be concentrating on all my um pretty ugly imported chai, uh, trident maples as i say these all came in in sort of 2017 2018 and yes i got them for practically nothing 20 pounds at most for things like this i have been absolutely atrocious at developing them and um this is the time like the maples once those leaves start to drop you've got you know certainly in that first week i'm um, gonna say i imagine that's going to be in uh, in november 
you can start doing some quite major structural work. So I'm going to be going right through these and some others, which I'll show you in a minute, and making some really big decisions like, do I put them in pond baskets? Do I remove loads of branches? I mean, you've got something like this, um, which is absolutely, well, it's gopping. Um, no idea what to do with it, but it's a trident maple, so it has an inherent value for some reason. And I need to start making some big decisions. So we'll be doing a couple of episodes on trident maple. Probably I consider it sort of basic primary structural development, um, taking rubbish, rubbish material and seeing if we can actually ever develop it into something better. So that's going to be certainly be featuring. And so we've got these tridents here, you know, much bigger. It's, it's unbelievable to think that uh, to pick these up from your online shops, you're, you're looking at well over 150 pounds now. Um, but I've got to try and do something that makes them actually look like potential bonsai rather than stumps. And that could be the idea. Things like this, I put them back into, um, into big buckets, but what I didn't do is put them into decent soil. So I can feel that the roots is absolutely rubbish. So that's something that's going to look at in the spring. But we've got all this growth. And I need to potentially go all the way back to the main trunk, have a look where I can start again, and seriously consider doing just that. And also as a part of um, Tony's legacy trees, Alex and I have each got one of these, I think they're spruce, that he put in these great big things. They've got loads of roots growing out the bottom, so they're obviously doing well. Um, we may well be looking at those. And uh, looking at some of the other trees that uh, Tony passed on for me to care for, we had this pine, which I did a very loose wiring on. I know some people didn't like it, but I'm, uh, I'm keeping options open what to do. But the main thing is I wanted to keep everything pointing up to the sky to improve health. But the one big thing that has to happen to this, as do all the pines over the next month, um, is over the next certainly two weeks, three weeks, is to get them into many of them into really nice free draining soil. I won't be doing anything else to it. Probably this is a good time to say, I will be doing a, uh, a Tony's Legacy Tree autumnal update. Um, so for those of you who've been contribu contributing or have got trees from Tony, can you please over the next four, over the next four weeks, have a look, see if you're doing anything. Even if you're not actually doing anything, try and just do um, a little sort of short, short video and uh, just saying where you're at and perhaps where your plans are with the tree. Send it through to me, um, usual address, expressions, bonsai at gmail.com so that we can get that all prepped for the, uh, the video special that will come out um, in a couple of months. Now, as with the tridents, the same applies to the Japanese maple. You know that in the spring I put them all into um, pond baskets um, with um, slate underneath to try and start projecting a, a flatter root base. Well, these, I need to look at these, weed them. But again, same thing, when the leaves fall, um, I've got that one or two week window where I can do some quite major pruning and, and decide on structure moving forward to next year. All of these will also get some um, dose of um, bone meal, which is all about roots. Uh, so loads of maples to be looking through. And um, again, I'll have a look and see if it's actually done what it's supposed to do. And looking at Alex's, all his pond baskets have roots coming out. And um, if it's any consolation, I can see exactly that all along the side roots there, which means all the roots going out sideways, which as you know, is what we really want. We're going to try and get those good nabaris on our maples. So that's gonna be a big job. The weeding obviously goes without saying, and also checking for any remaining wire that I haven't actually already removed. And there's a couple of trees that have still got wire. I'm also just gonna have a look around at some of the trees that I hadn't decided whether I was gonna keep or not. And one of the ones, I did a, um, a video about um, a type of tree that you can't bonsai, and uh, it was this one. Um, and I don't know if you can see there, but I can see the potential for a very, very good broom style. So I'm really happy about this. And it just goes to show that just because it's not a traditional um, bonsai tree, you still can do something with it. So never give up, but yeah, generally the rest of them I'm going to throw away because they're absolutely rubbish. But this one is going to be a beautiful, beautiful broom, I think.
It's a New Zealand tree, and I've forgotten the name, but I'm sure it's just coming up about now. I think when I talk about um, the deciduous stuff, and now's a good time to do some pruning, um, generally I divide it in half. So the stuff that bleeds more in the spring, I'll prune now. So that'll be the maples, um, birch, I'll do the beech as well. But things like the oak, where the leaves stay on quite a long time, hornbeam, I'll leave until next year. In fact, the oak are always the latest to get up. So they get left well and truly until the March. Um, but there's nothing stopping me having a look at these. Some of them looking quite nice, to be fair. So again, you know, this next sort of two months is about examining your trees. Are they sick? Are they going to make it through the winter? You know, it's a big point. The larch, like the oak, is one that I leave definitely for the, uh, the February, the early spring. I don't generally wire them over the winter. I know some people do, and there's sort of a mixed debate about whether, whether wiring's more risk. I just found that I tended to have a lot more branch die back if I wired stuff through the winter. So the larch I actually leave alone. And at this stage, certainly not going to get any more flushes. I'm now well past that third pruning date. I think the uh, cloud larch video showed the last time I would be doing that. So I will probably, I will just leave these and uh, just make sure there's no weeds in them. Um, but they won't get touched again until next February. I'm also going to be looking out for anything that may still have a, a layer on it. Um, this one, you actually haven't seen the video. You'll probably see it as a, as a sort of 12 months in the life of. Um, this is the hornbeam. And um, so it's a spoiler. But I've had to well, open up the air layer. And what I discovered meant that I just wanted to put it on again. And I've put it in a different way and this is going to be going through the winter. So again, this is one that I've got on my list that I'm going to actually have to put in the greenhouse. But I keep an eye on those, make sure that they're all secured, that there's nothing untoward about it. And yeah, so I watch out for anything that's got air layers. Also looking at a lot of the cuttings from this year. Um, they've now come out looking good. These were Satsuki azaleas, um, maple, Chinese elms, um, another satsuki, uh, a couple of tridents, genko, all the cuttings that have got through this summer and are now into the autumn. I want to try and uh, give them the opportunity to, uh, to maximize root production, but in the end, they will end up in the greenhouse. And as I said we're earlier, with the deciduous, we've got the silver birch here, great big long whips. Um, there is nothing stopping me over once those leaves yellow and drop off cut back, you know, I may well cut them right back down here and they'll be fine through the winter. As I say, I'll leave the larch. You know, the same applies here, Italian older. Um, I should have cut them back a little bit earlier, but I can still cut them back once the leaves fall. And again, while the weather's still good, um, I'll also look at things like the greenhouse. That is going to be subject to a separate video. And I think you've seen little spoilers of the fact that I've been working and, and refurbishing, but again, got to make sure this is going to take the trees through the winter and I've also got it set up inside um, so yeah making sure that your um, winter protection and the places you're going to site things in the garden is already set up because you don't want to be doing when it's already getting freezing cold that, that's the last thing you want to be doing I also keep an eye out for anything that has raffia applied to it and also wire Scott's pine nice and healthy you saw me working on this earlier in the year but I will look because I know that I opened up the, uh, the sapwood or whatever the, to make a shari, um, I'm aware that I've got to keep an eye on it. So I, you know, I look things over, stuff that I've worked on, just to make sure, again, that I'm not leaving myself open for problems with um, winter infections or anything like that, that I won't discover until next year when it could potentially be too late. So I keep an eye, look on things like this, and make sure they'll be all right and get through the winter. And again, with this, um, I'm quite happy the wire is going to stay on right through. Then we've got the beach. The beach, they tend to keep the leaves on. But what I do find I can do with these is wire them. Um, and there's a number of deciduous trees that I'll wire, but the beach is normally the one that I'll do. Yeah, I find that um, the wiring now, uh, certainly over the next few weeks, ideal for these. You can do it in the spring, but I tend to use this opportunity uh, through the, uh, the autumn time to look them over, 
um, do a little bit of pruning, not major, but a little bit of pruning and main, mainly what I'll be doing with this one and that one is wiring out structure. Um, I've found certainly here that uh, that allows me come the spring, I can take the wire off and it normally holds its shape. So I'll do a bit of wiring on those. And while we're here, it was something that Alex Braunton brought up. <laughs> What do we do with stuff that we've been doing sort of summer cuttings on? Uh, and you know me, I'm taking cuttings all the time now. Anyway, of you who watch uh, uh, Yella of Growing Bonsai will know he uses the baggy technique and there's a load of water in the bottom and in here I've got probably about eight or nine trident maple cuttings. Um, they were only taken two or three weeks ago. They may actually end up coming indoors where I've got my indoor trees right by a window where it can stay warm. I'm still trying to find a way to, to try and keep things like that going over the winter. But this year I might actually bring them inside because I know full well the cold frame just gets too cold. Um, the ones I did that to this last year all died. And I suppose the only other thing I watch out for is um, it's getting cold. And as you probably guessed or know, my ficus have already come indoors. Um, anything, once the temperatures regularly stay below 12 degrees overnight, I take them inside, I give them a good spray um, before the bugs start appearing. But the next ones I need to look at will be the jade. They'll also start coming indoors. And normally the lowest point for those is when you're looking at overnight temperatures of the sort of six, five degrees. So that's probably the late, the late end of November maybe. So I'll be keeping an eye on that, will be in the later part of the autumn. Um, and the other thing I make sure I do, once those leaves have dropped, even now, you're still getting the, um, the woolly aphid on the apples. Fruit, fruit trees are a nightmare, but apple is the worst. So you're constantly looking there. Um, when those leaves drop, I'll use a, a winter tree wash. I used it last year, and certainly I used it on the maples, and this year it has been absolutely fantastic in terms of um, keeping them free of a, a lot of the pests. I know it's not linked, but I really didn't get aphids on them either. Got this from the local um, local B and Q store or wherever your local garden centre is. Growing success winter tree wash. It's safe for children's and pets, so I don't think that means you bath them with it to try and keep insects off your kids or your pets. But it's safe if they I don't know they add it to their cordial. Well, we keep it somewhere safe anyway. But yeah, so I'll make sure I do a winter tree wash. And the other thing I actually have to look at is the pot cemetery. Um, as I say, there's absolutely dozens and dozens of pots that I have to wash and normally some sort of, I use a bit of an alcohol just to disinfect them and try and put them somewhere safe and dry through the winter so they don't crack and are ready to be used next year. And I lounge here on this very uncomfortable concrete, which is wet by the way and soaking through my jeans. I'm also starting to realise that I have this habit of having collection sites for these are all pots that had cuttings that just failed. The soil's good, and what I need to do is sieve it um, and uh, put it aside in a container where I can um, get it ready for use next year. Um, I've also got <laughs> under the seats behind me a black, um, plastic, uh, black plastic roll that's full of soil from the uh, spring repots. Now, I should have, in the middle of summer when it's hot, open that up and again sieved through that but um, I never got round to it. Um, there is also some um, black pine and Scots pine cuttings there which need to be um, taken out of this soil uh, and put into their next potting up soil. Um, they're one year old but I certainly won't want to leave those through the winter like that so they'll get done over the next few weeks as well. And then there's the stuff that I just don't get to in time. Um, these junipers I wanted to get repotted. Um, what will end up happening with these, I'll do the repot in the spring. You know, just because I'm doing them in the autumn uh, at the moment. I may, I may have another week for this one, but it feels a bit late for junipers. So I'll do these in the spring. Um, they'll be perfectly fine for that as well. So from Xavier, that's the sort of things I'll be looking at over the next two months and hopefully gives you an idea of what you could be doing and certainly an idea of what sort of videos you may be seeing. Looking lovely, the, uh, the two here. But uh, from Xavier in his bonsai retreat, as he heads towards another week and then holiday, 
Um, I'll say thanks very much for watching. Hope this is useful. God bless. Cheers.